The origins of Second Enoch are unknown. Research has not reached any consensus about the time, place, or contents of its first published form. The options range from Charles' theory that the longer recension was written by Alexandria Jew in the first century through belief that it was a Christian rewrite of First Enoch, probably in Greek, made anywhere from the second century AD to the 10th, up to the denial that it is anything more than a homegrown product of Slavic religious culture. In regard to Third Enoch, the Anchor Yale Bible Dictionary states that it is a late Jewish apocalypse in Hebrew, probably compiled in the 6th or 7th century. While interesting on their own, Second and Third Enoch are not really relevant to our current study. Like we said, when people talk about the Book of Enoch, typically they are referring to First Enoch. The content of First Enoch is what most people are familiar with and curious about. Moreover, the writings that make up First Enoch are what the early believers in Yeshua were familiar with. So with that said, who was Enoch? What is the Book of Enoch? What was the significance of this book to the early followers of Yeshua? What is the significance of this book to believers today? What can we learn from it, if anything? Let's begin with that first question. Who was Enoch? We don't have a lot of information on Enoch, but here is what we know from Scripture. He was the great-great-great-great-grandson of Adam and the great-grandfather of Noah. He walked faithfully with God and then was mysteriously taken away by God. Genesis chapter 5, verses 22 through 24. Enoch walked with God after he fathered Methuselah 300 years and had other sons and daughters. Thus, all the days of Enoch were 365 years. Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for God took him. The author of Hebrews elaborates on this event, saying that Enoch did not experience death, Hebrews 11.5, although eventually did die later. Hebrews 11.13. He was known as a man of faith who lived a life pleasing to God. Most importantly, in regards to our study, he was not the author of the book of Enoch. That last point might shock those who haven't really studied this topic, but it's a simple fact that the Enoch of the Bible could not have been the author of what we call the book of Enoch. Why? Well, there are a number of reasons. First, the book of Enoch contains anachronisms. For instance, the book of Enoch makes clear use of biblical passages from the prophets like Isaiah, Zechariah, and Ezekiel, which are obviously written long after Enoch's time. Places like Mount Sinai are even mentioned by name, which of course the patriarch Enoch would have no knowledge of. Second, scholars are able to determine the historical setting and date of the Enochic text by studying the grammar, syntax, and doctrinal content of those writings in light of other historical data. Enochic scholar George W. E. Nickelberg writes, The Enochic use of pagan mythological motifs and its preachments against Gentile oppression are clear marks of this text setting in the Hellenistic world and its complex interaction with the events and culture of that world. So that brings us to our second question. If the book of Enoch is not some special revelation written by the patriarch Enoch himself, what is it? The book of Enoch is what's known as pseudepigrapha, which means it is falsely attributed text. That is to say, it is a text whose claimed author is not the true author. The true author of the text attributed the work to a figure of the past, in this case, the patriarch Enoch. These types of pseudepigraphal works were very common between 200 BCE to 200 CE.